Well, good evening from Brisbane, Australia, and uh, afternoon in Thailand, where uh, my name is Karen Morris, and I had the pleasure um, of being part of the Travel Daily um, Inspiring Women in Travel. And today we have um, Natalie Globova with us uh, to share her story. Um, so welcome, Natalie. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Karen. It's a pleasure to be on TD, <laughs> Inspiring <laughs> Women in Travel Asia. Fantastic. So look, to kick off the, the usual, um, let's get a little bit of the Natalie story and we can dive in a bit deeper and um, take it away. Well, I guess I could start by telling you the long version, but I think that would take too long. <laughs> but I'll try to keep it brief. I came from Russia, born in Russia and Soviet Union back in the day. And then at 13 years of age, I moved to Canada, where I went to high school and university. I studied IT management. And then I decided to go for pageantry, which was a complete 180 degree turn that my life has taken from going to study IT and really setting myself up to go work in the IT industry to all of a sudden saying that, you know what, I'm going to make a little detour and I'm going to explore some of these opportunities that came around. And that was the Miss Universe Canada pageant, which I really looked at as an opportunity to explore the world and find a way to travel and to be out there in the world and to explore the different cultures because as you know Miss Universe pageant is very international yeah so the glamour and the multiculturalism really drew me to that pageant and I competed for the first time when I was 22 years old and I didn't win that pageant I actually ended up in the top five and then I thought that, you know, this is something, a learning experience. I definitely know that I could do better. And I still saw it as an opportunity to continue the growth and possibly have a chance at the national title. And then the second time I returned, I managed to win. And then it took me on this wild, crazy journey all the way to Miss Universe, which happened to be in Thailand in 2005. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so that was that how I ended the, the first time that you had been to Thailand? Yourself? Yes, it was the first time that I came to Thailand for the pageant and it was such a beautiful experience. I felt like I was in a fairy tale. It was this enchanted land with all these different foods and different culture and beautiful people. And so I fell in love with this country and I ended up moving here right after my year was finished. I had to spend a year in New York living and working there for the Miss Universe yes. organization. And then I decided to come back to Thailand because I felt there was something more that I could do here, something more I could explore here. And my heart was just really calling me. Ooh, and it's been going to be for one year and it's been already 16 years. <laughs> oh, wow. What a great story that um, that path of pageantry and, and that journey that you were on, it really did lead to igniting that travel. And then you've ended up living in Thailand. And I agree, it's such a beautiful place. And when you arrived in Thailand, was there, I, I see you were involved in, what, what led you to get involved in some of the, um, the movements that you were involved in or a spokesperson for? I, I think I read in your mm. bio. Well, I've done so many things here. And I think that's why my heart was calling me to Thailand because these are the kinds of things I don't think I could have done in Canada just because I got to work on some of the world's most important issues. I've been a spokesperson for UN and for Freeland Foundation, WWF and Habitat for Humanity and Soy Dog Foundation, which is a very famous one for street animals here in Thailand. So all of these wonderful opportunities came as a result of me to move to Thailand. And I got to be a spokesperson and raise funds and really just create awareness for some of these really important subjects like um, the elephant um, trade and the gibbon trade in the wildlife as well as of course helping raise funds for and building homes for single women with habitat for humanity so it's been really a wonderful experience so far well that's great so many varied things and i um i suppose along the way and, and being involved in pageantry with the miss universe uh i suppose you've you've been alongside other women that have been on similar journeys and have similar um goals and dreams that they were um, trying to achieve. And then when you came to Thailand, was there anything that stood out with you with regards to 
some of the women that you met in through those organizations or just being part of um, living in Thailand and, and being part of the travel travel world from that perspective? Well, I have to say that Thailand has been a big key player in my personal and spiritual development because the people that I've encountered and the culture that I've been able to immerse myself in has really given me that opportunity to become more patient, to introspect a little bit more, understand myself more, and at the same time, learn a little bit more about Buddhism and these Eastern philosophies that are very spiritual and very helpful to us on the journey of self-growth and self-discovery. So I have found myself to be a much um, deeper person in a way because of all of these teachings and the people who have, who have been my teachers along the way. It's been really wonderful. Have you been to Thailand yourself? Yes, I, I was fortunate enough to spend a lot of time in Thailand. So I agree with you. There's, there's a certain... Uh, Zen and learnings that just happens almost by osmosis by mixing um, with the people. And I and I also find that um, women in particular um, do such an amazing role in their families and their communities. And then now the opportunities uh, that we're seeing with so many women getting into uh, travel and other positions. Um, and and you know, and then it comes up with that how, you know, how do they overcome the challenges? And how do they do everything that they're doing? Uh, is there anything that that you were particularly challenged by that maybe that you could share with some of our viewers? In terms of adapting to the culture? Adapt it, yeah, or just in even in your work, work life or personal life? Mm. Certainly there have been many, many challenges on this wonderful journey. I think, as I mentioned before, developing my patience because I, I guess in Western countries, we want things done really fast and we yeah. expect things to be very efficient and everyone to be very proactive and on the ball. And sometimes in Asia, especially in Southeast Asia, you find that people are, as they say in Thailand, sabai sabai, right? It's very, it's a very chilled out way of living. And there isn't, there doesn't seem to be a lot of rushing or pressure that people put on themselves. And I think that's one of the reasons why people are happier here, or at least they seem to be because they're smiling all the time. And it, it kind of trickles into the whole atmosphere of Thailand because when I'm here, I really do feel calmer. I feel more at peace. I feel like I'm not placing these enormous pressures and expectations on myself, but I feel a little bit more calm. And so, you know, it was a challenge at the beginning to learn that because I was expecting things to be moving at a certain pace. And then when I realized that I am the one who needs to adapt yes. to their pace of life here in Thailand, that's when things started to change. And when I, I felt like I grew in many, many different ways. Yeah. So I see also that you have a um, series of books. You've written two books and many ebooks by the look of it. And um, so tell us a little bit about that side of, of your life and your world and, and what you do with that, what, how the genesis of that came about. And it sounds like there was some influence in that, um, on that spiritual journey that you spoke of. Absolutely, thanks, Karen. I started my writing journey immediately as soon as I finished my year as Miss Universe and I wanted to write about it because come on, it's an incredible, yeah unique experience that only at this point only 70 women have had the honor to have to wear that title to have that prestigious title and I wanted to really honor the title and answer a lot of the questions that people kept asking me how did I stay in shape how did I overcome all of these challenges how did I keep myself calm you know what was my year like so I wanted to put all of that together and I made the theme of the book about health on the holistic perspective. So it's called Healthy, Happy, Beautiful. And the book is really about how to create your healthy, happy, beautiful life from your physical, your mental and energetic perspective. So I talk a lot about fitness, of course, and about nutrition and about that mental side, the mental emotional side, which is your mindset, how you approach life, your attitude towards things in life. And so it creates that beautiful, wonderful cycle of healthy, happy, beautiful you, 
which then it helped me on my journey to be Miss Universe, right? Because yes. you can't well, just be physically beautiful. You have to be everything. You have to be mentally strong and you have to have the, I call it the winning energy, which is you know, energy you're vibrating at. So yes, that was my you can't, book. can't do that uh, just with one single focus. That's all about the balance. But that's something we probably have learned a little bit on one side of this in the in the last couple of years, we probably had to to dig deep in that and, and have a look at how do we have that balance, although it's been forced upon us um, in the last couple of years. But I, I love that that uh, that you dig into that. And when you were just, just loop, looping back to to the Miss Universe, um, just tell us some insights of of what that year was like and what you what you learned or what were the, what were your biggest takeaways now that you reflect back on that? Yes. I always say that that year was the most incredible year of my life, but it was also the toughest year of my life. Yeah. Because as you can imagine, you're not really living by your own schedule. You're living off a schedule the organization sends to you. So you are not your boss. <laughs> you're not and you're not responsible for what you do uh, on a daily basis because you have that schedule and you have to follow it. And of course, the jet lag and being away from your friends and family, that was the difficult part. But the incredible part was that I you know, opened my eyes to so many world issues. I increased my worldview right? I became someone who knew how to communicate to people of all walks of life, from people who live in the slums of India to all the way up to royalty and presidents and spiritual leaders. That's, it was so varied my year because I got to experience life in all of its glory, right? From all the different oh. perspectives. So and many times it was definitely difficult to learn some of these lessons because I was faced up to extreme poverty, right? When I got to see it, when I, on my first trip to India, for example, on my first trip to Africa, I saw little children who are born with AIDS and I mm -hmm. held hands with people who were dying of AIDS and coming from a shelter background in Canada where we really don't know that much about it, about the pandemic, of AIDS pandemic and on the global scale, it was really difficult for me. And I was really faced up with learning about it firsthand by seeing it right there in front of me with my eyes. And of course I had to raise awareness for, for knowing your status. And I've taken public HIV tests, which again, it, at a young age, it's, it's all overwhelming yeah. and scary and, and confusing, but I, massive growth completely a changed person afterwards yes well i'm sure we could continue the interview just on that for, that would go for hours and uh, i see on your instagram as well that uh, have you been recently working with the miss universe vietnam is that something yeah. that you've been working on yes i got the honor and was invited to be a judge at this year's miss universe vietnam pageant where they're going to choose the representative to go represent Vietnam at the universe stage. So Miss Universe is going to be sometime later on this year, but we're choosing the best woman for the job and I am one of the jury members. So it's really oh, exciting. Very exciting. <laughs> and I, I I did have a scan through. I was fangirling a little bit as I scrolled through, but I, I, there was one picture that jumped out at, at me. I think you were um, doing a masterclass or some sort of information where you had all the bright, young, beautiful faces in front of you just, and, and you were talking about, is it how to win the crown? Is that, that's your Instagram segment that you do? Or was that a masterclass <laughs> yes. that you ran? Well, exactly. Yes. It's my masterclass is called Win the Crown, where I teach young women how to become their most evolved, high vibrating, authentic versions of themselves so that they have the best chance to win the crown. And it's a very holistic approach as well to, to that masterclass, because as I say, we are not just physical beings, right? We're also energetical beings. And when you don't take that into consideration and you completely ignore that whole aspect of your being, then you are really selling yourself short. You're not preparing in the most effective way. So I incorporate a lot of mindfulness, meditation, breath work, also checking in with your emotions and feelings and going into your subconscious mind to understand where your fears might be and where your limitations might be. So it's a whole 
holistic, I call it holistic and integrative approach to pageant training, which I think is uh, the first one ever in this industry because people don't really see pageantry as a way to also grow yourself spiritually. Most people see pageants just on the physical side, but it's so much deeper. And if you talk to any pageant contestant, all of my girls that I train, they are so much more than just beautiful women. They have hopes, they have dreams, they're talented, they're compassionate, they want to bring value to the world. They have huge visions that they mm -hmm. want to achieve, not just for themselves, but for the betterment of the world. And so they're all so beautiful on the inside, as cliche as that sounds, they really, really are. And I think beauty pageants, uh, once you know what they are, you understand that. If you're just looking from the outside as an impartial observer, it might seem that it's very shallow. But dig a little bit deeper and talk to any of them and you see how much depth there is. Yes. I'm very proud of my girls. And I'm so happy to be in this industry coaching these young women who are going to be, you know, taking over the world after us, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if we can, um, you mentioned a couple of things there, but have you got a couple of tips? Because I suppose pageantry, if we... Uh, assimilate that you know it could be in business or in anything that uh, that that we do is, are there a couple of little things that you could uh, just share with us that are fundamentals um to what you share with um you know winning the crown could be winning winning the next mm -hmm. job or taking a chance on moving into the travel industry if you hadn't thought of doing that yeah, sure. And that's actually the book that I wrote, the second book, I Am Winning, is all about that. It's not just how to win in, in a pageant, how to win the crown, but it's more about how to win in life, how to be a winner that we all have inside of us. Because it's not anything about your financial situation or your background or your marital status or any of those things. It's really about your mindset. If you think like a winner, if you vibrate like a winner, you will be a winner. And so some of the tips that I can give you, of course, is you can practice your seven qualities of a winner. And the seven qualities are gratitude, right? The most fundamental one, being grateful for absolutely everything. Because when you're grateful, you're winning. Being fearless in the pursuit of your goals and really acting despite of the fears. I have those fears, absolutely face them every single day when it comes to writing my next book or when it comes to approaching somebody for an interview, right? Or for a multitude of reasons. I have fears, but I'm acting anyway, right? I'm doing it anyway. Third quality is resilience and changing your relationship with failure. How do you get up after you've been let down or after you've been turned down or you didn't achieve a goal? How do you get up and keep moving forward? Maybe pivot to another direction or maybe just keep going and staying the course and being persistent. Then the fourth quality is curiosity. And that's something that's inherent to all of us, but we definitely can practice following our curiosity and finding out what sparks a fire, what lights a fire in our souls, because those are clues. Those are little bread, breadcrumbs that the universe leaves for yeah. us. Where we can say, oh, I'm curious about this. Okay, let me find out what it is. And it might lead you to places you never even knew could be possible. I'm, so loving, that you, I'm loving that you have curiosity in there because I, I'm hearing that more and more in the business world as well as in personal growth and development. And I think it's, it's such a a great gift to master I suppose I, I call it a gift because if you if you can master it uh and it also you know it gets you to know other people and builds connections as you know it's so powerful exactly exactly so all of these qualities they are already inherent to us but we need to act on them and practice developing them just like curiosity is something that you could say well I'm curious but I'm too I don't know I, I don't want to be bothered to learn about that. But if you are allowing that curiosity to spark your desire and move you, propel you forward, then that's where you can take action on those curiosities, which then can lead you to incredible opportunities. Then after curiosity, we have confidence, which is, again, something people think that you must be born with and you either have it or you don't, well, confidence can be practiced and confidence is a skill just like anything else. And the most important thing about confidence is really self-love. Once you have true self-love, the confidence will shine through you. You don't even have to try anymore. So learning to love yourself is definitely the 
And when I talk about self-love, I don't mean just allowing yourself to sit on the couch and watch <laughs> Netflix all day long, but really self-care, self-awareness, self-development. These are the three pillars of self-love where you are introspecting, you're journaling, you're sitting with your emotions and drawing your boundaries, right? Learning to say no, things like that. Self-love is about all of these things. And then we go on to, from confidence is generosity, and of course, winners are those people who are generous because they're not limited by that uh, mindset of lack. They know that the more they give, the more that they will receive. So it's continuing that, it's igniting and continuing that cycle of giving and receiving. Because the more you give, the more you leave space to receive. So being generous and being generous with your time, with your money, with your resources, right? With your attention. Yeah all of that. And then finally, the last quality of a winner is awareness. And that awareness can come on many different levels. Awareness of yourself, obviously, being aware of other people and other people's needs. And of course, awareness of what's happening in the, in the world and just being yeah. tuned in and switched on so that you know what the heck is going on in the world yeah. and within yourself too. Those okay. are very important. So these are my seven qualities that you can find in the book, I Am Winning. And I think everyone, absolutely everyone has those qualities. They just need to be honored and practiced. Practiced, yeah. Well, um, and so many of those, as you said, can apply to anything in life. So absolutely. some great, some great uh, insights there. And um, I certainly will be uh, taking a look at the book because that, that it piqued my curiosity just um, listening to you and, and, the, and the way that you share that. So was there anyone in particular that, that inspired you or was it the culmination of the journey of your life that, that led you to, uh, you know, you said you wanted to write a book to, to reflect on, on that wonderful opportunity that um, was bestowed upon you with that Miss Universe title. Um, but was there anyone else that, uh, probably a few people, but anything else that you can think of that was a, a major inspiration to you? Absolutely. And when I was writing I Am Winning, this was about four years ago, so pre-COVID. And I think I myself, um, as we all are, going through our personal growth journeys. At that point in my life, I think I was really motivated and inspired by the likes of Tony Robbins and Simon Sinek. I'm sure you know these, yes. these names. And these were the people who are very much into leadership and motivation and almost like a very masculine energy, I would say. Yes. Although they also bring a little bit of spirituality into their training and their content as well. But I think I was just really moved by their taking action and going for what you want and giving yourself positive reinforcement and motivating yourself. So even as you can see on the, on the cover of my book, it's, it's quite masculine. You know, the font is masculine <laughs> and you can see, yeah, I'm winning. And there's uh, the solar plexus. Um, uh, well, the sun is shining behind the solar plexus of the lady who's standing on that mountaintop, which is a very masculine energy. And I know as I'm growing myself now and developing more spiritually and energetically, I'm tuning more into my feminine side. And I'm now getting more influenced by people like Marie Forleo, Mel Robbins. Um, I'm trying to think who else. You know, Oprah Winfrey. Be a is Brene Oprah. Brown lover, I'm sure. Is Brene? Brene Brown. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing somebody yeah. out there. But, you know, even, even people like Maya Angelou, who's very poetic, and yes. she brings so much soul and, and metaphors into her, into her words. So I'm really evolving and growing and finding that female energy, that feminine side of myself, which I'm bringing into my latest book, which I'm in the process of writing. And let's see, I think it's going to be completely different than I am winning. It's going to be much more feminine, much more spiritual, and really about the journey of the young woman growing um, internally to find love in her life okay. by finding the self-love first. Well, so we'll, we'll look forward tuned. to that one. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I believe also that you do have a travel business that you and your husband started. Is it called Travel Book? Yes, it's travel book, which has evolved and gone through its own changes since its conception. 
Uh, now it's more so about influencers being connected to brands, which is something that we are actively engaged in because we are influencers as well as a family. We have a YouTube channel called the Travel Book Family, and you can find us well, we've traveled to many, many different countries before COVID, of course, we've been limited to how many places we can travel to now, but even still now we're traveling around Thailand and we're exploring, we are pairing together with brands, you know, travel brands like hotels, airlines, um, and even lifestyle brands to really bring the most value to the audience as well as to promote the brands so it's a it's a win-win situation and i love this industry because there's so many opportunities for for growth and for creating value is it yes in so many different facets now because of our social the social media world that we live in uh that traditional travel uh the way that travel was delivered or the way that you booked it and now it's just expanded so much Albeit the last couple of years have been a challenge for everyone. How, how, how have you gone in the last couple of years? What, what have you observed and how have you maintained your winning um, approach to life in the last couple of years? Yes, the winning mindset was definitely challenged a few times throughout the last couple of years. And we had to restructure everything, basically. My whole coaching business has gone completely online, whereas before I was doing a lot of in-person events, book signings, motivational speaking, workshops, everything got put on hold and I had to move everything online, which is great because I actually, I love being at home as well. And working from home is really where my comfort zone is. Yes. So we've been doing a lot of that, but on the travel side, really we had to find different ways to approach hotels as well, where now we started working with tourism authorities of different countries. For example, in Thailand, uh, I've worked several times with the tourism authority of Thailand, where instead of really uh, approaching hotels, we said, why don't we work with the tourism authority to invite people to come so that it has a bigger reach and that we help the tourism of the whole country. So it's been really wonderful. And I love working with the uh, with Tourism Authority of Thailand because they really want to create a story, an idea yeah. of how to, they want to say, this is what Thailand is about. And I think they had a really nice holistic campaign where they showed the healthy food and again, the yoga and spirituality and all of that stuff where I got to promote the tourism in that way. Yeah. Right? So... Yeah. It was interesting. Yeah. I think there's been a lot of positive that uh, as it, it's, it's hard to say this, but the last two years being so challenging, particularly in the travel industry, I think that there, there has been a, a lot of wins that will, and I think they'll start to become more prevalent. And the fact that we pivoted in different ways and the opportunities now that is opening up, uh, I think is really quite encouraging and in, inspiring in itself. Yeah, I agree from any crisis there always arises so many opportunities yeah. and the people who choose to evolve with the circumstances with the weather so to say those are the ones that end up progressing and evolving forward right and then people who are still holding on to the old ideas and the old way that things are done it's much more challenging I think yes yeah and so um to if you reaching out to women who or men who are watching this um this video interview tonight um is there any what what advice would you give you've you've had such a varied um career and personal life if you reflect is there anything that you would share of what advice you'd give to someone who's maybe thinking about getting into travel or thinking about going for another job uh that next step for them cautious because the last two years has been challenging and that security is probably we're holding on to a little bit more, but anything that you would share with us, um, with our audience um, regarding having a go, I suppose that winning attitude would um, would play into that. <laughs> uh, for, for advice for people who are thinking of getting into the travel industry? Or just, or yeah, um, particularly just, uh, just in general, yes, yeah. So anyone who loves to travel, who thinks about maybe even a job and travel, I say do your research first and learn as much as you can about what is going on, what is the latest trends, what are people doing, what are companies looking for, because I think the winning attitude 
takes you a long way when you do your homework, when you prepare, and when you research what does the audience need, what does this company need, what does this country need, and then you know exactly how you can show up in, in that way that yes. provides the most value. So I would say do your homework, do your research, prepare in the best possible way that you can, because if you're an influencer trying to you know, be in this industry, which is so competitive and oversaturated at this point, I think <laughs> you really need to stay you know, head and shoulders above the competition, above the rest. So finding creative ways to present yourself and create a personal brand based on what your audience really needs. And I think asking questions, asking, for example, your audience or the fans or whoever, even if we're talking about a, a job, asking the people who are hiring, what do you need? What would you like to see me doing more of, right? Yeah. So not just assuming that you know, but actually asking the questions. Because it's just, it's so simple and easy, right? You just ask the people, what do you want more of? What do you want less of? Yeah. And then it gives you a clearer direction. So I guess that would be my advice. Does right. that work? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, and, and as you said, you shared those seven qualities, which I think is so easily transferable into anything that you do. So that's probably advice in, in itself. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us about your journey or just to wrap up? Um, tonight um, on well Karen I would love to talk a little bit more about spirituality because I love the subject and I think living in Thailand has really given me an incredible in-depth look at at what is available as far as spiritual growth there's so many different paths and so many ways I myself have gotten into yoga and meditation and breath work have you ever tried any of these modalities yes I, i'm not um as disciplined as i should be but i certainly do i do a morning meditation and it, it's funny when i travel uh particularly in asia i find myself practicing more it's ha you know having that discipline to bring it back into every everyday life when you're on holidays or you're at a retreat uh, but yet yeah, the breath work i've been doing a lot of work myself um with regards to that um emotional intelligence and and learning all about the brain and I think the breath work is just so powerful how it taps into all of that um, the physiological side of understanding ourselves that then comes out in the emotional side of us and the breath work is so powerful with shifting your mindset which you would know much more than me I'm just on the surface of that but the oh, simple well, I'm still simple learning. breathing yeah, I'm still learning for sure. Uh, not an expert by any means, but it has helped me in my own life. And I've been using these techniques and methods to give to all of my clients, not just on Win the Crown, but I also have other masterclasses like Win in Love and Win the Year. And I coach people how to win in life. So all of this information, it's all connected, right? Because we can set our goals and we can work on ourselves and you know, create the best version of ourselves, but that spirituality where we maintain that level of vibration that is equal to love, to joy, to peace, it affects every area of our life. And I always find that the more I practice these mindfulness techniques, the easier it gets in stressful times yeah. and times when the mind starts playing tricks on you or when it really does get, you know, impossible to do your job like in COVID times we we're not able to do the normal things that we normally do so the stress and the anxiety that can build up from that can easily be calmed down if you learn and teach yourself and really practice that routine and have that habit and discipline towards meditation it doesn't have to take a long time this, these days I, I put on a really nice um, meditation track it's like a music that the beats of the drum are very nicely spaced and I just leave it on. And then whenever I feel like, oh, you know what? I'm going to just take two minutes of counting my breathing in a box breath way, yes. right? Where you inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four. And that way I don't have to make time for meditation. I just kind of incorporate that into my daily routine, into my day as I go. So you need to find a way so that it, it is part of your life and not something you feel that you have to do. Because we already have so much things to do. Yeah. We can't possibly fit any more in. 
So yeah. finding that mindfulness and spirituality into your daily life as you go. Because sometimes even when you're driving a car, you could be feeling in the presence of your hands and feeling, you know, taking conscious breaths and really getting yourself into the present moment, even if it's just for one minute or 30 seconds. That is already yeah. good. I think that that's the, the the trick to it with our busy lives and the expectations of family and business and life. And just, it doesn't have to be like, just they can be those micro moments. So thank you for sharing those. And so mm -hmm. many wonderful things that you've shared with us along your journey. What what a journey you've had. It's been um, an absolute pleasure um, thank you you. to join us and those qualities that you shared with us. And I wish you all well with the writing of the next book, but I'm certainly going to dive in and, and have a read of, um, of, of the current book. And Thank it's great you. for you to join us um, on the Travel Daily Inspiring Women of Travel. And I wish you all very well for the rest of the year. All right, Karen. Well, thanks so much for having me. And I appreciate all the wonderful questions you asked me. And I hope to welcome you back to Thailand whenever you can come back. I'm very much looking forward to that. And I will be on a plane as soon as uh, I can get there. I think the restrictions are starting to drop and um, all the testings, we're seeing a lot more um, uh, Australians oh, back into the travel because you know, we love we love travel and, and certainly yes. Thailand, Bangkok um, in particular. It's getting much places. easier. Now, I think, you know, even by July, I think they're going to open up without quarantine at all. Yeah. Yeah. which is so good to know because when I travel as an expat, I still have to quarantine sometimes yeah. and it makes traveling and just traveling for work even so much more hassle yes. and difficult. Yeah. Well, I look forward to, I'll definitely look you up next time I'm coming your way, but thank you again for your time. It's been wonderful to meet you and sharing your story. So inspirational and um, see you sometime soon. Thank you, Karen. Take care. <laughs> All the best to you.